welcome to episode 13 of grandma's pillbox uh for this episode um dan liam chris are all dead i'm the only one left so i'm here continuing the podcast but to accompany me i have my girlfriend celia Woo! Yay! Yay! um she's never been on the podcast before so i wanted to uh ask her some questions or i'm gonna ask you some questions okay first question um you're an avid podcast listener yes do you want to tell the audience your favorite podcasts yes i will um if you hear that that's a little bit of asmr thrown in there that's thomas opening up his arnold palmer um i'm addicted to arnold yes to more than one arnold what? <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't know what that means, but um, favorite podcast. Well, I guess I listen to Mile Higher podcast a lot. I think Thomas has brought that up before. Um, it's a sort of true crime conspiracy podcast um, about a couple based in Colorado. They're really great. Um, and... I used to have another podcast that was my favorite called The Bro Show Podcast. It was run by Lucas and Jacob Cruikshank. Um, Lucas Cruikshank was the original Fred, if any of you know that pop culture reference. Um, But they unfortunately canceled their podcast, so I don't really listen to that anymore. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I also like to listen to another podcast called Violating Community Guidelines with Brittany Broski, aka Kombucha Girl. And Sarah Shower, um, she was a famous Viner back in the day. Um, I make Thomas listen to that with me as well. I and listen to all of the podcasts. Yes, he's basically <laughs> listened to all of them with me. <laughs> Is uh, Grandma's Pillbox your favorite? There's not a gun pointed at your head. Um, you know, I really have to see because I like to grow with the podcast. So, okay. I well, guess with more episodes and with a more consistent um host oh you know i like the the format of having you know just random hosts or whatever it's like oh this one's with liam and thomas oh special thomas and celia so i I guess it mixes it up it's like a pillbox well i mean pills are usually a pillbox is usually the same consistent um stuff and maybe we're not that but you know at least we're uploading every wednesday (laughs) yeah but um that was the wrong answer. You're supposed to say Grandma's Pillbox is your favorite, so... Well... But... Oh, it I, is. I it gonna, is my favorite. I was going to say, if um, Liam was here and alive, R.I.P. Liam, um, he'd be happy to hear that you listen to the podcast. I do. I'm an active listener. A very active listener. Um, I'm probably one of the five, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, second question, favorite movie? Favorite movie is definitely At Eternity's Gate. Um, featuring uh, Van Gogh. Yeah, it's a about... <laughs> no, what's it? Willem Dafoe. <laughs> it's featuring Willem Dafoe. It's about the last three months of Vincent Van Gogh's life. And obviously Willem Dafoe is playing Vincent Van Gogh. Oh my gosh, that rhymed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really, really love that movie. I've seen it like three times already. I actually, the three times I saw it, was like within the same week I like made (laughs) I watched it with Thomas first and then I made my mom watch it with me and then I watched it with some friends and Thomas again (laughs) I guess the audience doesn't know but maybe I should answer some of the questions too my favorite podcast of course Joe Rogan rest in peace he's not dead but uh he just works hard sorry uh check out the last episode of Grandma's Pillbox episode 12 we talk about our futures but um <laughs> my favorite movie is a very hard one it used to be the godfather undeniably but now after seeing so many more films i don't know like my friends know this the audience doesn't i love uncut gems yes um similar to you when it came out i've probably seen it like <laughs> seven times in the same two week span mm-hmm. but uh i love at eternity's gate too very um, I don't know how I'd say it. There's so many things you can pull from that movie. Yeah, um, I really think, um, depending on 
you know, because Vincent van Gogh had a very sad life. So I think there's a lot of different experiences you can pull and relate to from it. Um, whoever may watch the movie, but I really enjoy it. And it's also just really beautifully shot. Um, and I watch a lot of movies, so I would say that, yeah, I'm a pretty experienced watcher. All right, movies. next, favorite TV show. Favorite TV show, without a doubt, is Mr. Robot. Okay. Um, you know, some people may say Breaking Bad is the best show <laughs> of all time, but um, I know it's easy to create memes from it, but Mr. Robot <laughs> is just, like, without a doubt, the best show I've ever seen. Um. It almost feels like every show I've watched after that is just, like, <laughs> extremely, like, subpar compared to it. Um, I have to agree with Celia on this one. I think Mr. Robot, Robot goes over Breaking Bad for me. Just because I think Breaking Bad is a good demonstration of, like, TV drama. You know, like, done really well. But Mr. Robot has such a great story in it. And they do it in a very entertaining way. Yeah. And Mr. Robot, for the people who don't know, it sort of follows like um, a similar style to, I would maybe say Black Mirror, where it sort of like almost is something that could be true to our reality, but it's not. It sort of shows like the extreme parts of, um, I guess, like digital um, aspects of our world. It's about a hacker as well. Um, it's about um, cybersecurity, basically, yeah. worldwide. Yeah. And also the main character in it is Rami Malek, who is, like, amazing. Um, yeah. All I right. really like him as an actor. Um, last question. Do you like TV shows or movies better? <sighs> it's kind of hard. Um, well, is it hard? Um, we've definitely, Thomas and I, have been watching way more movies recently. Um, basically only watching Marvel movies <laughs> because we've been trying to get through all of them. Um, it really depends because I would say Mr. Robot in specific is like my favorite thing I've watched in general. Um, that's obviously a TV show, but then there's so many other TV shows I've watched where it doesn't really compare to some of my favorite movies. So I guess I have a complicated answer with that I don't really have a specific answer but I guess if I could only watch one I would watch movies because you could also watch movie series which are similar to tv shows where it's like a continuation well that's a good segue into uh the topic of the podcast and the big like one-liner is are movies becoming tv shows yes and discussion oh you say yes right away um, no, I'm just, oh. like, agree, agreeing <laughs> with your point. Like, okay. Yes, this is the podcast topic. All right. Um, well, I guess to get the conversation started, my first immediate, like, thought is, like, Marvel is, like, a TV show, basically. Or at least, you know, the cinematic universe of movies is basically a TV show to me. Mm -hmm. Just longer episodes. Like, um... <clears throat> well, like, phases one through three have mostly been just movies, while phase four, you know, you've got just so many TV shows. Yeah. But, like, that doesn't answer the question. Like, obviously, this distinction, they have a season, then the movie has, you know, just one movie. But, like, with Marvel, Thor 1, Thor 2, Thor 3, Iron Man 1, 2, 3, Avengers 1, 2, like, it's like a continual story yeah which is basically what a tv show is is just you know multiple viewings of a continuous story almost yeah and the way it's going right now um it's like you can't like you had to have watched all of them basically to really understand anything that's going on which is also another reason why thomas and i <laughs> wanted to watch all the marvel movies um the however like over 20 there have been so far but it's so true it's like basically just long episodes of a tv show um especially with marvel in specific how they're bringing in tv shows into the mix too with like wandavision and loki and moon knight and um hawkeye and falcon and the winter soldier that's already like five <laughs> yeah. um and you know yeah i think it's an interesting point um and i think shows also um and movies in general i guess just 
digital media follows um, a sort of arc of books to movies to TV shows and similar to with what I said with books like comics for example with Marvel um, and that's really interesting to me because it's like why why do you think that happens what like why do you think there's this switch from you know just like something that you can read to something that you can watch is it just like this sort of growing fan base around it Oh, you mean the adaptations of comics yeah. to movies? Yeah. Well, it's just a business idea, basically, or, well, you know, like, back in the day, newspapers were read, um, you would read comic books, you would read magazines, and now the media is switching to, uh, so it's just like a business venture, but I mean, obviously, it's for the fans, too, like, um... But honestly, I wouldn't say it's for the fans, too. I feel like it's for the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, like, pretty much everything is like, already been made. And, like, you know, um, basically, no storyline is really original. It's taken from something. Um, and then it just, like, you know, trying to rebrand it as its own thing. And Oh, um, isn't there, like, a... I've heard somewhere on the internet, I don't know if it's true, but it's, like... There's no new, like, idea that you can come up with or something like that. Oh, yeah. I saw that, too. It was, like, there's, like, 30 or so combinations that you can come up with for, like, a story. And there's nothing else besides that. Um, I think that's really interesting. And I don't really know if that's true, like, because I know there's, like, details that can shift it. But I guess the general premise or theme um, okay. follows that. I'm going to come up with a random thing. There's a man in the forest, and he uh, fights off zombies with a gun. Okay, oh, that wait. sounds like literally every zombie movie there ever is. <laughs> like, post-apocalyptic, like, okay, that I need was a to bad, survive on my own. That was a bad creativity one. I don't know. You, oh, um, think of something random, like a random story premise. Okay, um, woman falls in love with guy... <laughs> but then she finds out Guy is not who she seemed to be. That's, like, so basic, but... Oh, okay, but yeah, like... I don't know. Which... But, like... You can still make, you know, fun, like, movie stories out of that. Like, I guess the, the only example I I thought of right away right now is, uh... what The Green Knight. That yeah. was That was... That's, like, uh... Like a t- like a medieval tale or, or something. Yeah, you know? I think it's like a retelling of like a Shakespeare play. Mhm. Well, I thought that one was interesting. Like you know, it's not like, oh, you got to know the story beforehand. It, but the story's been told before. But it's just a new like I don't know. I think it's cool. Like um, uncut gems. It's just a man. Um, spoiler alert. That um, that dies in the end because of his gambling addiction but uh <laughs> spoiler alert it's major eh, eh, spoiler alert <laughs> oh well if you haven't seen uncut gems then you're wasting your time I feel or, like no you no, you're wasting for sure whoever's listening to this has seen uncut gems i don't think um well he doesn't have the chance anymore since dan is dead but i don't think dan's has seen it oh wait no dead chris i think hasn't seen it he's only seen like the first half and then mm-hmm. never kept watching it but dead um, dan and dead chris are the zombies in they're the, the zombies story you came up with <laughs> <laughs> um uh but like it doesn't only apply to marvel like you know the movie to tv show thing idea but like i've heard like joker 2 is in the making mm-hmm. is it uh, with joaquin do you know probably Mm. um there's a new batman like i think confirmed or you know like it's more more than likely to come out with robert pattinson it's like the same thing it's like oh i like this character represent like that i like the actor representing this character i want to see another showing of this so it's like a tv show it's like you like the person you want to see them yeah and i don't think that's like really a bad thing because it's like um obviously characters differ and it's like you can grow to connect with different characters and um yeah i think really like you know 
movies and TV shows in general, it's like a relatability thing. Like people really like it when they can understand someone and they can kind of see a manifestation of something that they're experiencing maybe with like, you know, professional actors who are doing it. Like that's pretty cool. Um where was I going with this? <laughs> um I guess yeah, I was just saying like I don't think that's a bad thing. Um I think it's a bad thing. You do? I think it's uh, a money grabber, and uh, it can be less creative. Mm. That's because or you you make a new Batman movie because you know the first one did so well. Might as well make another one. Like yeah. obviously the story is interesting. People want to see. I want to see the next Batman, but it's like. Yeah, they, and also it's like pretty lazy. It's like you can't come up with another idea. Well, I wonder how. There's no way. Batman and you know what's another superhero type movie that always you know that because Batman's been around for a long time Mm -hmm. at least you know like with Jack Nicholson Batman like Superman or something when's the last time a Superman movie came out I don't know there was just like that one (laughs) big like Superman versus that big DC thing I didn't follow that hype at all yeah but I feel like Batman as long as um uh, I don't know. As long as people keep going to movies, I don't think Batman is ever going away. Yeah. I feel like in 2050, there'll be a new Batman. Well, also, um, wouldn't you say that then, like, a new generation can come to enjoy it and enjoy, like, the story of it? Because uh-huh. I know, like, um, like, for example, um, West Side Story, right? Um, that original movie came out in the 60s and it was based off of a play and the play was based off of Shakespeare and then the new movie came out in um, I think like 2021 and I feel like so many um, like young Hispanic people came to see themselves themselves represented and I think that's really cool and it was also like a family movie that people can enjoy together and it's like the fact that it was based off of Shakespeare or something from so long ago like you know the classic Romeo and Juliet story um I think that's cool it's like you kind of see something live on for so long which I've also heard that like basically every story <laughs> like every good story is based off of like a famous Shakespeare play because <laughs> um, like even Romeo and Juliet like that's basically what titanic is too (laughs) (laughs) well like we said earlier all the ideas for stories have been made yeah but um what was i i wanted to say something uh i don't know i just feel like it's becoming such i don't know maybe because like you know terminator there's like six movies or whatever i would call that you know like close to a tv show like the way the title is framed but like what are other harry potter well that's just based off a book though it has an end so i don't know if i would classify that as a you know bordering tv show or just they made after harry potter though like you know harry potter and the cursed child and now they're coming out with all these like prequels like you know the Dumbledore movies and it's like (laughs) they were like oh Dumbledore is gay and it's like okay what like that has nothing to do with the original series at all like (laughs) well you know what's funny like when um so Celia and I we go to the theaters I don't know if anyone still does that we go to the theaters and we like to watch the trailers and I swear some of the you know like original movies I'm just crap (laughs) yeah they're so bad and i wonder too if it's like maybe if like you know someone is pitching something to a studio um if they see it's like a well-loved story who has like you know a lot of people that are celebrities and who are well known like like you said it's all a cash grab because it's like (laughs) oh if we put that on people are more likely to see it even if it's shitty um but yeah, but I also feel like, too, though, um, a lot of, like, critically acclaimed movies are not like that. Like, it's it's funny, too, because I feel like a lot of movies that are, like, you know, Oscar-nominated, a lot of them, if you're not into film, is not something that, like, the general public may have seen. Which I think that's cool, like, that they really appreciate, like, 
the sort of artistry around filmmaking and original stories like they even have their own category like best original screenplay and i think that's cool sort of like shining a light and awarding people who are trying to write original stories i know um she's uh celia said this um off camera or off microphone whatever but she was like is this like an american thing only? yeah because i mean i personally don't really watch foreign films um i just i guess i don't know where to start with them i mean everyone has watched parasite and you know bong joon ho films but i just don't really know about that you know that different sector of filmmaking and it's something i probably should look more into because i know there's so much more i could watch um but yeah like is yeah we're it really... only watching marvel we're experiencing yeah. <laughs> peak cinema <laughs> yeah like disney like marvel owned. oh do you agree um i don't know how long ago this was but when Mar- martin scorsese's like made the comment that like marvel is like a a circus a circus Hmm. Or like the Marvel films are. Yeah, just like I remember a that he was like making fun of sort of like the Marvel movies and like their success. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't agree with that because I honestly think like superhero films are like sort of in their own category. Like when I'm watching a Marvel film, honestly, like none of them, if I'm looking at it from a filmmaking standpoint and like comparing it to At Eternity's Gate, none of them are even close to five stars. Wait, let me think. Um, but I think, I think they're just different. It's like, when you're looking at a movie, you can't rate it based off of all movies ever. You look at it on, like, you know... The genre. That's how I look at it. Like... Yeah, and it's just, like, fun, kind of stupid, like, (laughs) this doesn't matter, but it's just fun. It's like escapism. Mm Mm-hmm. I will say, though, um, Thor, Love and Thunder was just eh for me yeah it was eh it kind of feels like with the thor movies um sorry guys if you haven't seen all of these thor movies before or are into the marvel cinematic universe but um with thor it's like okay he's one of the ogs and he's pretty well liked by a lot of people um and so it almost feels like it is a cash grab. It's like, they did not have to make another one. Like they did not have to bring Natalie Portman back as like the mighty Thor. Yeah. That was definitely just just a way to get more people to come in to see it. And it's like I remember in the trailers too. Um they featured like the Guardians of the Galaxy in it. And that's like I know one of their biggest drawings is like those those specific movies and that cast. And it's like, they were in the movie for, like, ten minutes. <laughs> like, right at the beginning. So, it does seem pretty cheap. And, yeah. But, I mean, that's Marvel-specific. Yeah. Um, do you think it applies to Star Wars? You know, I think I have a hard time with Star Wars because... I do know that Star Wars, um, sort of, like, in their last three movies, or, like, the most recent trilogy, um, I think that Disney had bought them. Uh-huh. Like, I think they were already planning on making another one, but then Disney bought them. And it's, like, they disney fight it. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, like, is it, is that something with, like, having to do with Disney? I don't know. Well, if disney is providing the funding then they steer in whatever direction they want because they're yeah. providing the money they're like don't make it that dark okay just make it a little bit more fun all right because i don't think it was like was it a george lucas film anymore after that point no i think he sold it away or he sold yeah because i think when you lose like that ownership over like something as iconic as that and like he was obviously like knew the importance of like how much people loved the films and the characters and i don't know like i wonder how much money that he sold that for that's Um, crazy all right uh intern dead chris look that up how much did george lucas sell (laughs) whatever (laughs) oh wait he's dead he can't do anything (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. Movies turning into TV shows. I, I guess my last talking point about that was like, is it a bad thing? And you kind of answered it. You were like, it's not really that bad. Yeah, it depends. I think it depends on if they, if, you know, if maybe like a um, a studio or a production team like actually really enjoys something and they want to like turn it into something greater versus if they're like, oh my God, this is something so many people like. If we bring these characters back, it can make them a lot of money. Because like, um, like I know the show Westworld, it's, it's based off of a movie, like a movie that came out in the 1970s mm-hmm. and then it has a TV show now and like, I really like the TV show. Yeah. And, um... But, you know, they made it a TV show. They didn't, you know... Oh, Westworld 1, Westworld 2. Yeah, I guess. But I guess we're talking about, right, movies to TV shows. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, do you think... There's no way. There's no way ever in movie theaters... Movie theaters, will they play TV shows? Oh, no. What, what if, like, um... The last episode of Stranger Things, if they, like, you know, had showings... I could see them doing that, possibly. But I don't know, because I... I don't think they would. Yeah, cause because I'm if like, it's on do Netflix... Do movie theaters have, like, a deal where, like... Oh, that they can't, you know... They're, like... They have to, like, only release it this way, like, on streaming. Mm-hmm. But I know sometimes also, like, movies now get released to streaming and they're in the movie theaters. Which I really hate that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... I really hate just, like, the streaming, like, everything. You can just get it so easily. Like, where's the fun of, like, going to the movie theaters and getting a popcorn and then having to run to the bathroom really quick because you don't want to miss anything? <laughs> like, Thomas and I, when we went to um, go see Thor Love and Thunder recently, he, like, made a joke during it, like, oh, like, Celia, pause it. Because, <laughs> like, we're so used to, like, after watching, like, 18 of those films, you know, just pausing the movie and then going to the bathroom or doing whatever. <laughs> Um, well, I, I think that's a fun experience when you really like the movie. It's like, oh, God, I got to hold in my piss or I'm going to miss maybe something important. Yeah. Or, but, like, with Thor, Love, and Thunder, I was like, all right, let me go take a bathroom break. I don't really <laughs> care. Yeah, I guess. Um, but um, what's – I don't know. And it's just people don't like to waste their time. It's like, what if the movie sucks? At least I'm at home. Yeah, well, even though, like, I think of my dad, <laughs> where every <laughs> time we are at, um, if we are at the movie theater and he sees, like, the trailer for something that looks really good, he'll be like, I'm waiting till I can get that on my TV at home. <laughs> and it's like, you obviously are in the movie theater right now and you liked seeing it on that big screen, even just the trailer. So why not go out and support theaters who are losing a lot of money and who I like to enjoy going to the theaters. It's like you're helping fuel something that I like and <laughs> helping fuel like filmmakers too. Because I know a lot of actors and just like, you know, Hollywood hates like streaming now because it's, I don't know, it's like, it's like lazy support to me. Does that make sense to you? Um, I learned about this in, like, film class freshman year. Um, it's a deal or it's a feud between distributors and streaming platforms where distributors make their money, which is, like, Disney is a distributor maybe, but, like, they make their money by, you know, like, selling and making deals with movie theaters, Mm -hmm. but, um, but the streaming is, like, it kind of cuts down the middleman. So that's kind of, like, I think where the conflict, yeah. at least in the business sense, comes in. Like, but, um, I don't know. I like, I like going to the movies because I don't have a freaking, how big are the movie screens? Like, humongous. 200 feet. <laughs> yeah, especially if it's, like, one of those IMAX theaters or something. It's, like... Yeah, like, uh, me, me and my friend Angel, we saw The North Man on um oh it was like a big d theater yeah it, it was called the big d experience <laughs> <laughs> and like i swear it was bigger than probably um two or three movie theaters side by side or not movie theaters like you know regular yeah, digital like, screenings yeah like 
three of them stacked side to like side to side bigger than that and it was just insane to see it on that type of screen like, or like that's um, just so fun like how or like when i saw uncut gems for the first time um me and my friend were sitting in the front um we both hit like the dab pen and like just seeing uncut <laughs> gems on the huge screen right in front of us it was just very fun or like um, you haven't seen it. I want the new or the newer Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. I wish I could see that in like you know IMAX. That yeah, dope. that is really cool. And also like, um, bringing this back to Marvel, I guess. But <laughs> um, like I think it's fun if you're in a theater and people like are excited in the movies with you. Um, so I guess with Marvel, like when Thomas and I went to go see, um, Spider Man No Way Home, the one with like. The original Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Um, that was so exciting. Like that was so <laughs> fun because we were in one of those movie theaters where like everyone is like screaming um, and they're just really excited. And I feel like that really amped up my experience of watching it. I think that's mostly just a Marvel thing, though. I don't feel like yeah. it happens in, or at least I I don't remember experiencing it like in any other theater. Or maybe, though, like, if you're watching, like, an emotional film or something, and, like, you know, I think of, like, when I was 12 years old, and I went (laughs) to go see The Fault in Our Stars, and every other teenage girl in there with me was, like, sobbing um, when, like, something big happened. And that was, like, so exciting, and it's something I still remember to this day. Um, Yeah, I think I... Basically, I don't want movie theaters to ever go away. What... What do you think was the first movie you saw in theaters? Oof. I I remember what movie it was, but I forgot its fucking name. You know, I know my mom has told me that I went to go see, like, you know, not The Lion King that came out in the 90s, but, like, probably whatever Disney princess movie came out when I was young. Maybe Lilo and Stitch or something? That's mm-hmm. not a Disney princess yeah. movie. But definitely one of those iconic Disney, like, Disney Renaissance era films. I have no clue if you cannot remember the name, but it was like an action movie, probably around 2013 is when I saw it. And it was like, oh, what the hell? It was like, <laughs> you know, obviously the human army versus some alien race that came and took over. They made two of these movies, I think. Was it Aliens? Was no, it just Aliens? No, Aliens was in space. This was in, um, on Earth. It oh. was, uh, Home, Home Battle? Home Recon? <laughs> oh. It wasn't a good movie. If, like, I watched it now, I'd probably be bored, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, seeing that, I guess that action movie was super cool, though, mm-hmm. when I was a little kid, and it's like, oh, if you were to watch that same action movie as a 13-year-old you know, at home, it's not the same, like, I don't think you'd get, you know, the same charm for movies, probably. You know, I do think, at least right now, I can think of my youngest memory I currently can think of, um, of being in the movies was, um, (laughs) when my mom and I went to, um, for some reason, she was like, let's go see the Medea movie, and I don't know how old I was, I was definitely young, and we were like, you know what, let's not see this. And the other screening that was available that was, I guess, appropriate for my age was Coraline. <laughs> and we walked in when it was probably, like, 20 minutes into the movie. Um, I've seen Coraline multiple times, so I know the time frame pretty well of it. But, um, yeah, that was a pretty traumatizing experience <laughs> for me because Coraline is definitely not a kid's movie or it shouldn't be labeled as one it it should not be rated pg when like the whole premise of it is like this other mother lures like a child away to this other dimension (laughs) like for the sole goal of like eating her soul like how is that rated pg um Coraline is also one of my favorite movies Mm. um it's just so nostalgic to me also it's like is there something wrong with you that that's your favorite, like, one of your favorite movies? Um, yeah. That's, I guess, my earliest experience I can think of. Nice. And you have that battle movie with aliens. I don't know. It was, 
I, I couldn't rem- I don't remember if it was aliens or like robots or maybe both, but like it just wasn't good because I don't remember anything about it <laughs> or you know there's not a continual series of it. Um, uh, freak. I don't know. I just think back to 2019 when there were so many good movies and they weren't sequels. I don't think. Yeah, you're right. None. I don't think. Oh, wait, look it up on your phone. 2019, like Oscar winners or something. 2019. Yeah, you know what? I saw something about like, because I think there was recently one of those big film festivals like TIFF or Canes. Yeah. Or something like that, and I saw like a meme where it was like, nothing will relate to when this was all released at Canes at the same time, <laughs> and it was like you know the same thing I think you're talking about where it was like a bunch of really great movies okay so 2019 oscars yeah 2019 oscar movies all right so 1917 for like say say the category and then the movie okay wait i have to go to oscars.org not sponsored not sponsored oh yeah there was oh my god there's so many movies this year black klansman there was um a star is born with lady gaga Lady Gaga's iconic, by the way. <laughs> um, there is... Um, sorry, guys, this isn't really in a certain order. There's Green Book. There is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Wait, but for what categories? I'm kind of going by different... <sighs> Hold yeah. on. Hold on, you guys. Best Pictures at the bottom. Okay, so Green Book. Oh, my God. Black Panther was nominated for Best Picture. I don't know if you guys knew that, but fun fact. Bohemian Rhapsody, Roma, Vice, A Star is Born, The Favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are the Oscar nominees. Uncut Gems got snubbed. For Best Picture. Yes. Uncut Gems got snubbed. For real. For real. Uh, I think Uncut Gems was good. Who... who directed it again the safety brothers the safety brothers same people who made good time and then i think one of the brothers um isn't oh he's in the new obi-wan um, yeah he's in the new TV obi-wan show. and he was in that paul thomas anderson movie black um, licorice black licorice yeah <sighs> i think um that we can conclude our conversation here yes Thank you guys for listening, but before I go, I have to say the sponsors. We are sponsored by Castaway Clothing. Liam usually says this part. I don't know what the fuck to say. There's probably an affiliate link under the episode that you can click click that helps um, our buds at Castaway Clothing. Um, Unofficial sponsor of the day, LaCroix, the Pamplemousse. How do you pronounce that? The flavor is pamplemousse, everyone. Give it up for pamplemousse. Pamplemousse. Uh, it tastes like... Tastes, tastes like, like flavored water. Tastes like pink dried peach to me. Mm. Okay. Tell me if you agree. Pink dried peach. What? Well, I don't know. The, the, the... It tastes... It tastes peachy to me. Yeah. Peachy key. <clears throat> and then the second unofficial sponsor is uh, Arizona Ulner Palmer Light Half and Half Iced Tea Lemonade. Um, A classic yes. in my home. <laughs> For Thomas, mainly. A classic in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounded weird. <laughs> okay, guys. See you uh, next week. Goodbye. <laughs>